Welcome back to Tennis Talk. My name's Cam Williams, and with the season just about to start, we're going to go through the ATP Top 10 predictions for next season. Who is going to finish on top of the rankings? Who's going to finish 10? And everyone else in between. We've already done the WTA rankings. You can go check that out uh, to see how... If you agree, disagree, uh, same with this list. Make sure you comment down below if you don't agree with me and you think something different. Well, let's start with the number 10 player at the end of next season that I think is going to finish. So coming in at number 10, I've got Yannick Sinner. Now, some of you might have him a lot higher because he has got the potential to be in the top five, possibly in the future, maybe even a number one somewhere down the track. He's got points to gain at Indian Wells, Paris, and at Wimbledon. And he did do very well at Wimbledon. Remember, he did have Djokovic down two sets of love in that Wimbledon quarterfinal. So if that's worth points... He's probably in the top 10 at this point, but he does have points to lose at the Australian Open, US Open, and Umag, uh, where he made the quarterfinals of a couple of those slams, and then, of course, won Umag. So, interested to see how he does backing up the quarterfinals, but I think he's going to get up the ranks. I think he's going to finish at number 10 in the world this time next year. Coming in at number 9 now, and I've got Holger Runa. Now, again, another player that a lot of you might have much higher in the top 10, but I'm just a little worried at his game at slams. Doesn't have any points at the Australian Open to defend. Cincinnati or Wimbledon, he lost in the first round of all those events. So he has a lot of points potentially at those events, but he has got Paris indoors to defend at the end of the season. He's got the quarterfinal of the French and also the final in Basel. And I'm a little worried at how he does at slams because he did great at the French, but outside of the French Open, his results weren't great. As you can see there, two first round losses. So can he play five set matches? That's what I need to figure out next year. I've got him in the top 10 at number nine. Some of you might have him higher, but I'm not quite confident enough to put him any higher than that. Coming in at number eight now, it's Alexander Zverev. Now, very impressed with how he's come back the last couple of weeks, and it looks like his injury might be behind him. And I was going to put him a lot higher, but I just couldn't justify putting him too high because that foot is still a worry for me, and he could be out for months if that foot gets re-injured. He does have no points to defend and a lot of points to gain at places like the US Open Cincinnati Wimbledon because he didn't play any of those events. Remember, from the French Open onwards, he didn't play, but he does have a lot of points to lose over the clay court season. French Open being the the most Madrid and Rome so if he can get through that clay court season relatively unscathed on the ranking side the second half of the season he's playing for free kind of like Rafa this year where in 2021 Rafa got injured from the French Open onwards and everything was to gain so Zverev could fly up the rankings in the second half of the season next year but I'm going to keep him at number eight just in case that foot does get re-injured and he doesn't play as many events as maybe he wants to coming in at number seven now is Kasper Ruud now currently in the top three so a lot of people are probably thinking hang on why isn't he going to stay in that top three? Let's have a chat about it because the points to gain, he actually got a lot of points that he could make up in Madrid, which is a clay court event, Oz Open, which he didn't play last year, and Wimbledon as well. So he could really do some damage at the start of the season until the midpoint of the season. But I'm just worried about those finals that he made. The French Open, US Open finals, and also the ATP finals, a lot of points up for grabs there and a lot of points to lose there. Can he replicate that? I don't know if he can, especially with Djokovic coming back. That's always going to be a trouble at places like the US Open. You know, the French Open, he got a pretty nice draw. He's going to get another nice draw to be able to make another final. You know, avoid some of those big guns. I don't know. So I'm a little worried that he's going to lose those points. Look, he could still make semi-finals at those events, but it won't be enough to keep him in the top five. So I'm going to get him at number seven because I am banking that he is going to drop down the rankings and lose a lot of those points and maybe not replicate the amazing season that he's had in 2022. Coming in number six now, I've got Stefano Tsitsipas. Now, it's hard not to put him higher, but it's also, I don't think I can put him any lower. He hasn't played very well at the big tournaments. He lost in the first round of both the US Open and Canada. And of course, Wimbledon was worth no points and he only made the third round. So if he could do well in the second half of the year, then possibly he could be higher. But he does have a lot of points to defend at the start of the season, especially in Monte Carlo in the Australian Open. He's been at the Australian Open semi-final the last couple of years, so maybe he can replicate that. And then Cincinnati, he made the final. So that's his big points that he's got to defend next year. But I, I don't know. I couldn't really justify putting him any higher unless he maybe wins a slam or makes another final. But I couldn't put him any lower because I think he is going to have a solid year again next season. But... Got him at number six in the world this time next year. Coming in at number five, and this might shock a bunch of you, but I've got Carlos Alcaraz. I'm just kind of like rude. I feel like they've had a very good season. But I'm just a little worried about backing it up next year, and I think now he is going to fall down. Now, he doesn't have any points in Rome or Monte Carlo to defend. Of course, Wimbledon wasn't worth any points, so he could really make up some points there. Events on the clay courts, but it's where he has to defend points. The US Open, like I said, with Djokovic coming back, and Zverev also maybe in the mix. That could be a really tough event to defend. Miami, Madrid, he 
need one both of those. Again, Djokovic coming back, playing those events. I'm a little worried for Alcaraz having to defeat Djokovic to win some of these tournaments, even though he did that in Madrid. So I've got him at number five just because of the Djokovic factor coming back. And also Zverev. I think Zverev proved at the French Open last year that, you know, he can beat Alcaraz. And look, Alcaraz had a great season, but we all know that there is a little bit of question marks whether or not he is the true number one in the world or if maybe because of some other players not playing that he got to that point with a little bit of luck. But I've got him at number five next year, dropping down from the number one position that he's got right now. Coming in number four, I've got Felix Auger-Aliassime. Now, this will be a massive jump for him if he can get there, but I feel like he turned a corner in 2022, and he's got a lot of points to gain at some big events. US Open, he only made the second round. Miami, lost in the first round. And Wimbledon, he didn't get any points. All tournaments that he's done well at before. And Wimbledon, of course, I feel like he could be a Wimbledon champion one year because he does have that Federer-like game, all-court game. He can come to the net, do crazy things, hits very hard, serves very big. So I reckon he can make up some really big points at those key events. And the points to lose are not that bad. Rotterdam, Basel, and the ATB Cup, he has points there because he won all those events. So he's really banking on the fact that he's won sort of ATP 500 events. But the 1,000 in the Grand Slams, he can make up a lot of points. And I think he's going to be in the top four this time next year, maybe even making a slam final at some point in 2023. Coming in at number three now, we've got Rafa Nadal. And I know a lot of people are going to think, wait, hang on, how come Rafa's not number one? Why aren't you going to put him at number one? I actually think Rafa will get to number one at some point this year, but this time next year, he will finish as number three. I think he can make points up at uh, Canada and Monte Carlo, two places that he didn't play this year because of injury. Uh, and I saw, also think he might be able to play well at Wimbledon again and gain some points there. But... It's a points to lose. Of course, the Australian Open, Djokovic is back. There's a lot of tough players at the Australian Open. It's not his best tournament either, even though he did uh, win it last year. I just think there's a lot of things that have to go right again for Rafa to win the Australian Open again. So I think he might lose some points there. French Open, I don't think we have to worry about that one. And then the Indian Wells final is another big chunk of points he has to defend. But I'm just worried that with Djokovic back, it's going to be tough for Rafa to win the same tournaments that he did this year. So I've got him down at number three. Still top three for me because he's a GOAT. It's very hard to put him anywhere else. You know, I don't think he's going to drop outside the top five or top ten. But it's an Australian Open that I'm a little worried for, especially with that Djokovic factor coming back. All right, coming in number two now, and I've got Daniel Medvedev. Now, a little bit strange. He was number one at some points this season, but I feel like this year was very disappointing. Once he lost that Australian Open final, he just never regained the confidence. Also suffered with injury as well. So I reckon Medvedev will make a massive comeback next year and finish at number two. Uh, he's currently, I think, number six or seven in the world. Uh, he's got points to gain at Canada. The ATP Finals, he played, played okay, but he lost all of these matches. And Wimbledon, he didn't get to play. And that's a big factor. If he can play Wimbledon, kind of like Sabalenka in the women's side, I think that they can go up the rankings because I think both of them at Wimbledon might be able to do some damage. The points to lose, of course, the Australian Open final, that's his biggest points to lose, making the final there. So he's going to have to play well in Australia again this year to kind of, I guess, cover himself. Uh, he could drop down the rankings after the Australia and then, you know, have to come back harder. But also Vienna and Cincinnati, two big chunks of points there. But again, I think that if he's allowed to play Wimbledon, that's where Medvedev will rise back up. And also, you know, US Open he didn't play well at uh, this year for the first time in a couple of years. Uh, ATP Finals, if he makes it again, he's, you know, playing for free. So I reckon Medvedev is going to rock it back up the rankings, and I reckon he's going to be at number two this time next year. And the number one ranking is going to be Novak Djokovic. I, I think most people are putting Djokovic as number one, even if you're not a fan of his, just because of what he did without playing every tournament this year. He didn't play so many massive events. You can see there, uh, Australian Open, US Open did not play. And also Wimbledon, worth no points, even though he won. Uh, he's going to be the favorite in Australia, the favorite in Wimbledon, possibly the favorite of the US. If he plays all those events, which we expect him to, he's got only points to gain. And the points to lose, ATP Finals, Rome, and in Paris. Uh, and again, the limited amount of tournaments that he played, the fact that he was still able to finish high up the ranks and also win the ATP Finals. I mean, be the best of the best, go undefeated. Uh, I just think that it's going to be so hard to put him anywhere else but one or two in the world. This time next year, it's only points to gain. Game. And I think he's going to be on a bit of a revenge next year, especially in Australia. Hungry to win. Also hungry to get that record over Rafa, that Grand Slam record. He's on 21. Rafa's on 22. Uh, you know, if he's allowed to play every event, it might be possible. So I've got Novak Djokovic number one at the end of next season. So there you have it. They are my rankings for the year. And at the end of next year, this is what I think the top 10 are going to look like. Let me know down in the comments below. What are your top 10 for next year? Do you have someone else other than Djokovic at number one? Again, like I said, it's so hard not to put him at number one because he has no points 
to defend so many events, so many key events that he's done well at in the past. But again, let me know down in the comments below what your top 10 is for the 2023 season.